my beard is growing long. Hmm. All right. Hello and welcome everyone to episode 24 of the low, low poly modeling challenge. I said it again. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 24 of my 10 minute modeling challenge. Rosenberg Sarah Eva. Sorry if I said your name wrong. I suggested that I should make a Kraken to go with the theme of the pirate ship before and the pirates and also the island. So I'm going to have a go at that. I'm going to make a Kraken. I'm going to have a crack at making a Kraken. So let's get cracking. Oh my God, another bad joke. Put it in the comments. I know, I know. I'll try to better myself. I'll, I'll, one day I'm going to come up with some fun jokes. Maybe not. Probably won't happen. Anyway, uh, I'm recording. I'm recording the screen, I think, as well. So a Kraken. We've got the screencast keys running. Everything's running. I'm not running. I'm sitting. But let's get going. Okay, ready, steady, go. And we're going to start by deleting the default key. Delete the default cube. Delete the default cube. And let's play that one backwards. We start with the nihilism. Nihilism. Delete the default cube. How can that turn into nihilism? The rejection of all religious and moral principles in the belief that life is meaningless. We start with the nihilism. Restore the f nihilism. Oh, don't know what happened. Ready, steady, go. I'm gonna have to hide the default cube for this one. Top view, shift A, let's add a curve, a bezier curve. Shift D to duplicate that one. Make some tentacle here. So here, let's switch on, on geometry here. Let's go depth, maybe 0.1 or something. Yeah, uh, two in the resolution. And let's pick the taper object here for this one. Make some shape to that tentacle. Let's see what we can make this tentacle look like. Maybe something like that will do. Smaller at the tip. That's it. Okay, tab here. And let's get this curve moved. Uh, so G, I'm going to make eight tentacles here. So let's uh, scale this one down, rotate it. Get this one, scale it down to rotate. Uh, e to extrude. Oh, I'm going to extrude a bit here. E to extrude. Uh, e to extrude that one. There. Shift D to duplicate this one now and rotate. E to extrude. E to extrude. E to extrude. Shift D. Ro oh, rotate. Uh, e to extrude. E to extrude. <laughs> I'm going to try to get them aligned here a little bit. So E to extrude. E to extrude. E to extrude. Rotate. Shift D. E to extrude. E to extrude. E to extrude. No. Let's just move that one in and this one out. Okay. Shift D, do some more curves here. So E to extrude, E to extrude, R to rotate. Shift D, I don't want to repeat the mistake of last time. E to extrude, uh, S to scale, uh, R to rotate, E to extrude. Shift D, one more tentacle here. E to extrude, E to extrude. Oh, E to extrude, I said. Let's get you there as well, a little bit longer. Okay, how am I doing? 807. Then we have to get some uh, vertical shapes here as well. Let's throw some shapes here. So that one goes up, that one goes up maybe, and this one goes up to there. Up, down, down, up. Very scientific this. Maybe we have this one as well just going like this. And here maybe up as well, and up, up, down, <laughs> up down, up, down. Okay, that's it. Let's uh, do F3, convert this one to a uh, mesh, and then uh, top view. We have to link these together now, G. And let's see, I have to do this manually, I think. So delete here, center on that one. And uh, now we're just gonna merge these. So how am I doing? 7, 16, Alt M, merge at center. Alt M, merge at center. I have to do this for all the center ones here. I wish there was a faster way for this. Um, Again, comments, guys, if you know, I'm trying to read all the comments, but unfortunately, I don't have much time to reply lately. But I do try to read most of them, and I will try to sit down and reply. Mm. So that's linked. Let's connect these faces. F. Uh, F. To, uh, just have to link this first section up here to make it look. Then I can probably do some shortcuts. But the blender is not as smart 
as I want it to be. Well, it's really good actually. But I need some to help it a little bit along the way here to do this first thing. So I just link these up manually. How am I doing? 628. Okay, there we go. Here we go. And here we go. Because now I should be able to do shift select all the way around there. Side view maybe. Uh, e to extrude as the scale. There we go, guys. Uh, let's just control right click, I learned. Thanks for that tip. Scale to extrude fast. Scale and E to extrude. E to extrude as to scale it down a lot there. Okay, that's it. And that's our main shape. Uh, should scale this one a bit out, maybe like this. G to move it up. That's the main shape uh, of the tentacles there, maybe. Uh, so let's uh, tab here. We need to cap these, don't we? So let's Alt Shift select those. Shift G. Thanks for that tip. Select similar there. Cap those. Alt E to extrude long normals. Scale it down to there. And now we can do a vicious mouth. Oh, I had something wrong there. Period individual origins skeleton. That's it. Let's make a mouth there as well. Uh, G to G to extrude. <laughs> Got some serious issues here. Scale E to extrude that one into the head. Okay, now we're gonna make some tentacle suction cups here. Five minutes have gone. Uh, so let's do Control Four here to subdivide this one big time. And now um, I have to go into sculpt mode here. So let's go into sculpting. And uh, we have to do some tentacle here. So, or the suction cup. So let's drop the radius maybe to there. Let's increase the strength and change the fall off here. We have to do a custom one, a suction cup custom graph. You've never made one of those before. Pretty sure of that, neither. Should you have to. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have to disable. Oh, I have to apply the modifier. Did I do that? apply sculpting and now we should be able to put a mirroring off here now we're going to do very unscientific we can probably drop this to 1.5 maybe and a mirroring i thought i disabled you okay very unscientific method here to this to show uh, put these it's going to be my symmetrical brain is flipping out right now because it wants everything to be nice and proper spaced but time has a good um way of telling you no you shouldn't waste your time doing that so i'm just gonna have to spend some time now manually placing these uh, suction cups and that's one thing you don't do very often unless you plunge i've got some kids so i need to plunge the toilet quite often they're quite creative with what they put in there so uh, if I zoom in, it's quite good because it goes a little bit smaller. Okay, I uh, can't be too picky here. How am I doing? 336 to go. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. I should probably not sing for everyone's benefit. Okay. Oh, why did I do eight arms? <laughs> I should have done like six. How, how many arms does a Kraken even have? Probably has more than eight. Okay. How am I doing? Uh, three minutes and zero seconds to go. Suction cup rally. It's another one thing I don't really say that often. Um, I wish I could come up with some creative stuff to say now. I should be able to tell a joke, but I don't really know any good jokes. Ask my kids. I think I've taken this whole dad joke thing to a new level. I can't even look in the camera because then I'll miss the tentacle. Did you ever play Day of the Tentacle by LucasArts Games or whatever they're called? That was a cool game. Laverne, I think one was called in there. Uh, why do I have to go upstairs or something, she said. Okay, wasting time now. Mine and yours. Okay, how am I doing? Two minutes to go. Oh, this is the last tentacle now. Um, Day of the last tentacle. What was it called that game? Last tentacle. Day of the tentacle. Okay. Here we go. This is my last tentacle. That's it. Uh, let's... Uh, Sculpt something here on the head as well then. So how am I doing? 145 fall off. Let's uh, reset this one back to a normal. 
a smooth one. Let's drop the strength and increase this radius again. Maybe we'll do some shapes since we're in sculpt mode here. Oop. <laughs> 0 0.5 I wanted. Not 0, 0.0. I should have a I should have as many hands as this has got tentacles. That'd so save me. That'll get some serious hotkeys pressed. Okay, let's uh, I don't really know what, what uh, maybe I should uh, look at what they look like in the face before I try to sculpt a tent or a squid head. Okay, let's get some weird stuff going up here as well, maybe. Uh, one minute to go. Okay, let's uh, tab out of that one. Uh, UV editing. Oh, I didn't put the material on it. Shading, material, UV editing. Let's make it just red, I guess. A, A select everything, A scale. Ooh, <laughs> uh, no more low poly for me. That's it. There we go. Let's make uh, 40 seconds. I throw some eyes in here. Shit. Uh, let's do a mesh, UV sphere. Scale you down, rotate, rotate Z, and I need material on you as well. There, UV editing A, scale 0, 21 seconds. C, and G, 11 seconds. Shift oh. L, shift D. Rotate Z. Ah, okay. <laughs> the weirdest eyes. I should change this, shouldn't I? Not so good. Oh, there we go. Okay, squid. No, kraken, sorry. You're a bit sad looking and you didn't get any teeth. Sorry about that. <laughs> We've got a squid and it's not out. First thing I didn't uh, make a low poly. Uh, how many polys does this have even? Half a million. How, oh, well, edges, 1 million, 1.1 million. So that was low poly out that window or door. <laughs> That's the weirdest eye, isn't it? Sorry about that, squid. I don't know how many suction cups there are. They should have really been a different color, shouldn't they? I should have done this as well. If I had time, I would have probably done something like this. I would have done this, check this out. I would have circle selected a few things around here. Like that, probably. Alt E, extrude. To maybe there. Scale, zero. Control plus. Control plus. And I would have made that white for some teeth. But like my daughter would have said, that would be cheating if I did it now because it's after the 10 minutes. So I don't have to control Z on that one. We just have to live with that. Quite happy with, uh, with the polygon count though because I'm so used to making low poly and I even call this stuff the low poly modeling challenge. Probably not uh, the most uh, optimized mesh. But uh, Unreal Engine 5 just uh, announced that they're going to be... Uh, they had like uh, meshes that were 8 million uh, faces and they had 50 of them in one scene. It did some crazy optimization there. So that's pretty cool. And maybe I can get away with having this squid and imagine this one being rigged and animated and everything like that. Crazy. Uh, let's render this one as well, shall we? So I'll bring it into a uh, rendering tab here. Let's do a camera actually. So let's go back into UV editing here. Tab out of that one. Shift A. Let's add a camera. Control. I think it's Control Alt Zero. No, Control Shift Zero. That's it. Then maybe we change this uh, focal size to there. We can cut the tip of the tentacles out. Maybe even. Don't have to. Fit. I've got a tendency to want to crop everything into frame, but then when I look at pros' uh, pictures, they always crop it nicely. So even like I'm meant to crop my head off like that or something. It's probably good because I've got the biggest forehead in the world. But let's see. But I, I tend to always want to have everything in frame. So like normally I'd put these tentacle right in frame. But I'm going to try to cut them off now as well. Chop them down. A Gangnam style. What? Uh, let's do F12 now. Let's render this beast. The default cube. <laughs> there we go. Default cube is back. I don't dare to delete it because the whole thing will crash on me. So let's... Uh, 
see what we can do about that one. We can actually do this. So I expand that one, show that little camera thing, disable it in the renderer. We can still, we haven't delete. Sorry about that. Oh, I hit the wrong thing. I hit the camera. There we go. That's our squid. That's some funky looking eyes. You have to admit that. Maybe I should do it like that or something. <laughs> 10 minutes squid. Okay. Uh, but I want to change this one now to maybe, uh, should I do the, from Eve? I can't, can't really do Eve so good. So let's go to the workbench. Get my trusted old uh, low poly style here. Let's crank the shadow up. Cavity. Can we do this? Or how does that, I only use this for low poly, so that's probably not so good. We get that shade uh, look. So maybe we can uh, just do... Uh, here, let's do a screen just. All right, let's switch the background to black as well then. This is where I, first I'm happy with the result and then I mess everything up here, make it look super strange. So let's, uh, I always forget which one it is in. Is it in this one? Viewport display, here we go. Black, render. Okay, I should uh, change the eyes maybe if I render it to uh, shade it. L, L, U, V, face, shade smooth, tab. That's our 10 minute squid. No, squid. Kraken would flip out if I said squid, I think. Did I miss anything crucially? Nope. All right, guys, I think we've got ourselves a Kraken. A Kraken, 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 Kraken. Kraken. Okay, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who's joining the Discord. Uh, I haven't been there so much this week because it's been a, a hectic week for me, but I plan to drop in a little bit uh, again. And also congratulations to Haxen, I think you called by in, in the Discord. You've set the fastest time on my low poly racer game that I made. It's a very prototypey game, a glitchy, buggy game, and you found a way to exploit the, the colliders that I have at the edges for the checkpoints or the corners, so you could cut the track really good, but it's still very difficult to drive that fast and find out where those colliders are. And I know you're probably fed up with the game and hate it and want to delete it, and you feel free so, to do so. Uh, you've won yourself $50 worth of uh, Steam vouchers, so congrats on that one. Uh, well done. Also, I want to th say a big thumbs up and thanks to my patrons. Uh, I've had uh, a bunch of new ones, uh, so thanks a lot for supporting me. I'm really really thankful and if you can't that's perfectly fine I'm just happy to have you here as a subscriber as well so if you haven't subscribed you should consider doing that at least hmm. okay <laughs> no I'm just joking so I should make a tip this week I should do a tip what tip should it be well there's a lot of a lot of new stuff in this video isn't it stuff that I haven't really done before like the sculpting and things let's do a bunch of tips actually let's do them a little bit slow in order here let's recap what I did with the curve here so from top view I did so shift C to center that one out let's delete this camera or hide it again uh, but what I did here was shift A, and then I added a curve, a Bezier curve. I don't know how you say that one, but I say Bezier. And then I need the two curves because one is going to show the profile or the tapering of the tentacle, and the other one is going to be the tentacle itself. So I pressed shift D to duplicate that curve up to here. And then I selected this one again. And here on under uh, the object data properties tab, I went to the geometry. You have to expand that one possibly. And then I changed the bevel here to 0.1 to make it a little bit thicker and then I changed the resolution because now you can see here that um, you've got I wouldn't call this high poly but it's quite a few polys anyway so I dropped it to 2 to lower the quality here for the modeling part and then I wanted to change up here the ta uh, taper object I pressed this little uh, droplet thing or picker and then I picked that Bezier curve and you can see now that if I go top view this one now follows the shape of this curve. So I went into tab here to edit mode. I should really have screencast keys on. And then rotate. And then I move this one up to make it thicker. So it just follows this profile. Um, this curve here has got its center here. So this is the thickness that it'll throw at the start of the tentacle here. Tab in here and then I could change up here as well for the end point. So that's how you change the thickness of this tentacle. And then what I did, actually, I'll make it a little bit thicker here. And then you can rotate these by doing this. Or you can rotate the whole center here. That's I find that faster to rotate. And you can also, instead of dragging these in and out, if you have the center there selected, you can press S to scale. <laughs> I love saying that. And I got it right this time. So S to scale to scale that curve. 
to make it less uh, sharp, the bends here. Okay, so we've had our first tentacle then. I went into tab into edit mode, A to select the, all of the points on this one, and then I pressed G to move it. And then I wanted to place this, so I rotated the first one down like this. And then you can basically just press the same keys as before, G to move something, and R to rotate it, or S to scale it, and E to extrude it. And then you can see that it's got a funky twist here now. If you wanted to have it less twisting, I could select these two, press S to scale those down a lot. And you can also rotate these. You'll also notice, by the way, I should mention that these are open at the end, so we have to cap those at some point. Uh, but then I press Shift D here to duplicate the outmost. It doesn't actually really matter which one you pick, but you have to pick one control point here of the Bezier curve. And then you have to start from the tip of the tentacle, not the center here. So I pressed it out here. And then I pressed R to rotate it, and then E, my friends, to extrude it. There, and then E again, and then E again. And then I just did this Shift D, and I did the next tentacle, and I made eight of these. So R to rotate, G to move, E to extrude, R to rotate, S to scale, E to extrude, R to rotate, E to extrude, S to scale, R to rotate. And the key thing here was to get these to be lining up to a circle. So that's why I wanted to do that for. If you look from the side view here or from any not top view, I move them up as well. The nice thing about doing it like this is that the uh, Bezier curves and this uh, beveling takes care of all the shaping here. So that's really uh, useful. Since I'm at it, I'm already throwing out tips here. I might as well continue. Unless you're too bored, you can switch off and go and watch something else. Maybe you could watch um, memes. That's good. Let's have a sip of this. Or you could stay here and watch uh, the continued process here. At some point later on, I pressed F3 and com typed convert to. And then we converted it from the curve here to a mesh. And then we're back into traditional uh, low poly style land. Then what I wanted to do was to link it up into the squid uh, base shape. So I had to tab into edit mode, press one on, on here. And in order to, maybe there are faster ways to, I could have probably bridged it like this. I could have said, oh, why didn't I do that? F, Are you kidding me? Uh, I could have done this. I could have F, F. I could have f this together like this. Okay. Okay, that would have saved me some time. Since I needed to select these anyway. So, okay. Don't do what I did. That was stupid. So, instead of uh, merging the center vertices here like I did, I uh, merge them at the center. Just press 2 to get into edge select here. Select the face, select the other face here, corresponding one, and press F, like in Freddy. And then select these two, shift select these two, F. So that's how I link those up. Okay, and then at some point, I also pressed control, shift, select, and select it all the way around to extrude up. And from the outside, this is what that looks like. I might as well also just recap the, the suction cup thing. So let's put um, a little base here as well. I'll just do this cross section here. So I'll go from there to there. And then let's just extrude down to there. E to extrude. Okay. I pressed control four. That's the shortcut to apply subdivision modifier. And then uh, I applied it because I was going to go sculpting here. So that's very high poly now. We're back into high poly land. I said back into it. Never been to that before. Unless... Uh, today and then went into sculpting here and if you just were to try to sculpt these now you'll you could basically like draw that and then press control and then draw it down draw a new one with the normal hold the control key and draw it down so you could make the tentacle things like that but in order to save some time there uh, you can change the custom fall off that's what i did and uh, changed from smooth here we dropped it down to uh, custom and then we had this scientific curve here, that uh, suction cup curve, call it. It's a new one. And um, I said I was never going to make one again, but and I'm not because I've already got one here. <sighs> I talk too much. Okay, so imagine that you're seeing a suction cup from the side. A plunger or something. Or a squid. Or <sighs> Okay, imagine you see a suction cup from the side. At the center here, you'd have a like a crater basically so imagine that this is also mirrored on the other side because it spins it around uh, like a circle when it comes to slow talking or like explaining this in detail i'm doing a worse job than when i do probably when i speed model stuff anyway 
Imagine that this is half the profile of the suction cup. So this is the base of the suction cup or like a crater and then it goes up to the ridge and then down again. So that's why I drew this custom curve. And then it's a bit weak like this. So we have to increase the force. We have to use the force here. Up it to two, the strength. Or I think I did 1.5. And then you just need one click to create one suction cup. Pang, pang. And if I would have been doing this nice and carefully, like you should probably model, instead of the stupid method that I do to do it really fast, I would have done like this probably. And another beautiful thing here is, based on the zoom level, it changes the size of this. And another beautiful thing, a lot of beautiful stuff here, then that's that this uh, is actually aligning to the normal of the face. So you don't have to be worried about placing the suction cup in the wrong way. You can even click up here. And it's like magic. Sweet potato pie. So that was another tip. That was a whole bunch of tips. And that's all the tips I'm going to do for this video. Also, another thing I started to do uh, with my son, we started to make uh, some Roblox stuff. That's what I've been... Uh, so I say I've been busy this week and it's because I've spent uh, time both working on the game and I'm also uh, spent a lot of time with uh, my kids and uh, my son started to be interested in doing stuff for... He's played a lot of Roblox and now he wants to make his own Roblox game stuff and so does my daughter, one of them. So we've actually spent some time, I'm learning uh, Roblox Studio a little bit. It's a bit more primitive, I'd say, than what I'm used to in uh, Unity. A lot more limitations and a different way of doing things. So it takes, uh, it's a bit frustrating. I spent a lot of time to do something that I could do really fast in Unity. But I'm enjoying the process. I've got uh, a character running. I actually brought the lava monster in. Uh, if you remember that one from a few episodes back, I created the lava monster. So I imported that into Roblox Studio and created a little platformer. So maybe I'll just release a little Roblox game here, like an obby or something like that. And uh, with some enemies, uh, maybe uh, the rock monster or lava monster or golem. <laughs> I guess that's what it's called. Uh, it could be punching, like uh, punching you instead of having just spinning, revolving stuff in an obby. So that was a lot of fun. I'm going to learn more about that and pro probably we're going to make uh, within the family uh, since my kids and my wife even is interesting to make some interested to make some. <laughs> my wife's interesting. That's why I married her. So my whole family seems to be quite interested in making Roblox stuff now. So we're going to make ourselves some own games, I think, in that one as well. Not no, Don't know where I'm going to get the time for that, but it's a lot of fun. So other than that, I know a lot of people are also waiting for the low poly racer tutorial. I've got the episode uh, next to do as well. Can't even remember if it's five or six. I think it's six, isn't it? Uh, so it's basically the skid marks and uh, the low poly smoke and things like that I need to add. So I know, sorry to keep you waiting on that one. So I'll be editing that one. And I've also got a whole bunch of things planned for you. I've got uh, a really in-depth starter tutorial for Unity. I wrote it and it's like 30 pages script that I want to go through. And I've planned it out quite carefully. So I want to really make it a good introduction. If you want to start making games in Unity, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And when I do release that one, it'll take you everything through uh, how to make it in Unity. I'm going to use uh, Unity 2019.3 with a new UI in it as well. So they've changed the look on that one. So I'll try to keep it fresh. I like to go in fresh, uh, Seinfeld. All right, folks, I hope you had a good time. I hope you liked this video and uh, I hope to see you back as well on uh, the next Thursday build. We're going to do one uh, episode 25 next week. So we're half a century worth of not really. We're uh, 25 weeks into this uh, challenge uh, that we're doing this year. A lot of excitement. I'm nearly hitting 70k subs as well. Really happy about that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next week for another 10 minute Blender build. Until then, take care and have a good one. Bye for now.